Hello everyone, and welcome! This is Dr. V the Chemi, and today we'll be talking about mixtures. In particular, types of concentrations, composition, where we'll get into mass and molar percentages, and how to calculate average molecular weight. So to start, let's go into those concentrations. A concentration is a measurement of a solute in a solvent. And your solute is something that's going to be dissolved in your solvent. Typically, if you have a solute, it's going to be a much smaller amount that's dissolved within your solvent. And when you speak of concentration, there's a few common examples, right? So we've got our mass concentration, which is grams, usually represented in grams per milliliter or pound mass per foot cubed. We've got molar concentrations, which are represented in or have units of gram mole per liter or pound moles per foot cubed. We've also got molarity, which is gram moles per liter. And we've got molality, which is a little le less popular, but is represented in units of gram moles per kilogram solvent. Now, this is the situation where we have a solute dissolved in a solvent. Now, let's say instead of having this, we have a mixture of components where they're all in the same phase and not really dissolving one component within another. What do I do there? How do I represent this numerically? And this is the situation where we're going to represent and describe our mixture using mass or mole percentages. And as you see on the screen, we've got a mass percentage where I'm gonna use the variable X with a subscript of A where A is a, a dummy variable, I'm just using it as a placeholder to represent whatever my component is. And so our mass percentage would be X subscript the component, and our mole percentage is going to be represented by Y, or lowercase y, subscript, again, A, or whatever your component is going to be. And, and mass or mole percentages are the most common things you're going to be using when you're speaking about a mixture. Now, when we're referring to these mixtures, we're often, oftentimes going to be switching between a mass percent to an a mole percent. Again, depending on your system and what is the more con convenient unit to use, whether it's mass or moles. And for that reason, what I want to do is a quick refresher on how we go between a mass to a mole. So in this refresher, I've got a sample problem where if I have 652 grams of sodium chloride, where the molecular weight of sodium chloride is 58.443 grams per gram mole, how many gram moles do I have? And in this case, we're looking at the moles of sodium chloride, where I'm using N as my variable to represent moles, subscripted with NaCl, sodium chloride. And so we'll start with our mass. We'll take our molecular weight. We're going to multiply by one gram mole over 58.443 grams. Again, pay attention to the units. I have gram moles in the numerator and grams in the denominator so that my grams are going to cancel out and I'll end up with gram moles. And so when I do this multiplication out, I'm gonna end up with 11.2 gram moles. All right. And so we've successfully been able to convert from grams to moles. Now, something that might've come up in the sample problem that you are not familiar with is the term a gram mole. And I think you may be wondering like, Dr. B, I thought everything was just a mole. Ah, not quite. There's actually a few differences here, slight differences, where technically a gram mole is what we mean when we say a mole. It indicates that we are using grams as our, of, as our mass of choice for molecular weight. However, there are other types of moles. You can also have something like a pound mole, a kilogram mole, or a microgram mole. And in any of those cases, that predominating term or the preliminary term of pound, gram, kilogram, those indicate what mass you are referring to. So for example, if I had one gram mole of methane, CH4, right? And I multiply that out by the molecular weight. So in this case, I have for a gram mole, I'm working with grams. So we'll multiply by 16 grams per gram mole. I would have 16 grams of methane. 
And if I wanted to look at how many pounds that is, we'll just do a quick conversion where I multiply by one pound for 454 grams. And you'll see that it's 0 0.035 pounds of methane. And now if I, if I do the same situation, except here, I now have a pound mole of methane instead. What you're going to notice is when I multiply now by the molecular weight, instead of it being 16 grams per gram mole, I actually have to now use pounds because of that preceding term of a pound mole or the pound in pound mole. So now we're going to multiply by our molecular weight, our revised molecular weight of 16 pounds per pound mole. And in this case, what you see is now, instead of me having 16 grams of methane, I have 16 pounds of methane. And when we multiply this again and convert from grams into pounds, or sorry, pounds into grams, you're going to see that we actually have 7,264 grams of methane. And, and so I just, I want you to be aware of this, ter these terms and be aware that there's actually differences in the type of mole you use. The majority of the time, people are going to be referring to moles in terms of gram moles, but it always helps to be aware of when some of the times you may be dealing with pound moles or kilogram moles. And the reason why you may be operating with these different types of moles is based on your setting, whatever, wherever your process is. Some places may be operating in such high quantities that it makes more sense to speak in terms of kilogram moles or kilomoles rather than gram moles, or you may be located in a country where all the things you operate with are in the English system or the U.S. customary or are using U.S. customary units, in which case it may be convenient for them to speak in terms of pounds and pound moles. Whatever the case may be, you're now a little bit more acquainted and you understand that there are different types of moles and the conversions between gram moles and pound moles is not that bad as you see on the screen. So now that we've clarified the whole gram moles, we now understand the converting between a mass to a mole. What I want to do is an example calculation for mass percent. So in this example, I'm going to have a mixture and it's going to be a mixture of methane and ethane composed of 40% methane. Obviously the rest is going to be ethane. And what I'd like to do is express this as a composition, express this composition as a mass percent. Okay. So what's one of the first things you might notice as you deal with this problem? You have percentages, but you have no starting amount. Huh? So what do I do about this? How do I go about calculating a, a mass percent when you never gave, when I never gave you a value. Ah, so in this situation, what you're going to have to do is you're going to do something called assume a basis and a basis is an assumption we're going to make to aid in our calculation. Now in this type of situation, assuming the basis is actually going to benefit you. It's not going to throw off the calculation. It will at it, whichever value you pick, it will all work out. And you'll see in a little bit why that is. And so we're going to assume something to aid our calculation. And in this situation, we have percentages, but I have no starting amount. So the thing I'm going to have to assume, you guessed it, is a starting amount. And so for us, what I'll do is I'll assume we have a hundred, a hundred gram mole mixture. And you can, there's a, a variety of values you can assume. You can assume 100 gram moles, you can assume 1,000 gram moles, you can assume 1 gram mole, or 1,256,314 gram moles. It's all, it's all good as long as you don't pick zero or infinity. The thing is, is that when you're assuming a basis, you generally want to pick a simple number that will just make your calculations a lot easier. But whichever one you, whatever value you pick, it's all, it's all fine when in this type of situation where you're assuming a basis. So now that we've assumed that we have 100 gram moles in our mixture, we can now take that amount and multiply it by our mole fraction or our mole percent. So for methane, 
what you'll see is that when I take the 100 gram moles, I multiply by that 40 mole percent, I'm going to have 40 gram moles. And what we need to do is we need to get a mass percent. So I need to convert my methane amount and my ethane amount from moles into grams. So we got our 40 gram moles. We'll multiply by the molecular weight of methane, which is 16 grams per gram mole. All right, we'll find it, we'll calculate it. We'll see that we have 640 grams of methane. And next, we're gonna calculate ethane, doing the same process. So for ethane, we're gonna take the, the leftover amount of our mixture. So since we use 40 gram moles, you'll see that we have 60 gram moles left, which is all ethane. We'll multiply by the molecular weight of ethane, giving us 30 grams per gram mole for the molecular weight. And when you multiply this out, you're gonna get 1800 grams. Okay. And the next thing what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna switch over slides just to give me a little bit more space to work with this calculation. So we've got our 640 grams of methane, we've got 1800 grams of ethane. And now when we calculate our mass percent, our mass fraction, what we're gonna do is it's gonna be the mass of methane divided by the total mass of methane and ethane. And so when we substitute in all our values, we'll have our 640 grams divided by the total weight, 640 grams of methane and 1800 grams of ethane in the denominator. And what you'll see is that we're going to have a mass fraction of 0.62 for methane. You can also refer to this as a 26.2 mass percent of methane. All right. Now, when we deal with, so now we have an understanding of how to calculate that mass percent, and it's a very similar process if you were calculating mole percent. You do the same procedure, but you'd switch from going, you'd go from a mass into moles. Now, when we deal with mixtures, there's another interesting part of a mixture that we have to take into consideration, and that's the molecular weight. And when we when we deal with the molecular weight for a mixture, we're going to calculate something called the average molecular weight. And now there's a couple of things I want to clarify with an average molecular weight. So the first thing is that it is not an arithmetic average of molecular weights within your mixture. You can't just take the average of component one, component two, component three, average it all out and call it a day. It doesn't quite work like that. So instead, what you need to do when you calculate the average molecular weight is you need to take into consideration the distribution or composition of your mixture. Because if you have 90% of a heavy component and 10% of a light component, that molecular weight is going to be very different than if you have 10% of a heavy component and 90% of a light component. And, and this is why we need to take into consideration the distribution when we calculate average molecular weight. And there are two methods for calculating the average molecular weight, which we're gonna go into momentarily. And to help me with this cal these calculations, what we're gonna do is we're going to reuse our mixture from before with the methane and ethane example. And so again, we're gonna have 40% methane, 60% ethane. And so we're gonna try our first method, method number one. And in this case, what you're gonna do is you're gonna calculate the average molecular weight, which is represented by an, a capital M with a bar on top. And that average molecular weight in method number one is calculated by having the total mass of all your components divided by the total moles of all your components. And so just as a, a recap from our methane ethane mixture, we had 640 grams of methane, we had that 1,800 grams of ethane, and we assumed a basis of 100 gram moles. So when we sum up the numerator, we would have 2,440 grams. We have 100 gram moles in the denominator. And when you do this division out, you'll see that the average molecular weight for that mixture is 24.4 grams per gram mole. Now, the other way that we can calculate and arrive to, at the same average molecular weight is with method number two, which is using a weighted average. So in this case, the average molecular weight is gonna be calculated by taking the mole fraction of component one, multiplied by the molecular weight of component one, and you're adding it to the mole fraction of component two, 
multiply by the mole fraction of the molecular weight of component two. And you can, you can extrapolate this equation to fit the, whatever number of components you have within your mixture. So you can add on another term, Y3 times M3 plus Y4 times M4. Again, you can keep going for this average molecular weight. It's the same calculation. So in our situation, we had two components. So the, the starting equation works perfectly fine for us. So if we substitute in the, the subscripts, we'll see that we take the mole fraction of methane multiplied by the molecular weight of methane, and we're going to add the mole fraction of ethane and multiply by the molecular weight of ethane. So in this case, we had a 40 mole percent or 0.4 mole fraction of methane and 60 mole, 60 per, 60 mole percent or 0.6 mole fraction of ethane. So we'll take those amounts, multiply them by their respective molecular weights. And what you'll see again is you're going to get an average molecular weight of 24.4 grams per gram mole. Ah, well, what do you know? And so the reason why I also wanted to show you these two different methods for calculating the average molecular weight is because, again, depending on the, the values that you are given, one of the calculations may be a lot more convenient for you compared to the other. So you have options when you perform this calculation. And so that's going to wrap up this, uh, this video. And just to recap, we talked about different types of concentration you may encounter. We talked about composition, in particular mass and mole percents. And we talked about a couple of ways you can calculate average molecular weight. So that's everything for today. Thanks a lot for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one.